Hey friends, let me give you a situation. Let us assume that you have 100 rupees with you and you want to eat your favorite chocolate and the cost of a particular chocolate a piece of the same chocolate is 20 rupees let's say you are just starting out eating a chocolate on a single day for example on day one you are eating one chocolate so how many rupees is now left with you that is 80 rupees on day two you are eating another chocolate now the number of rupees which is left with you is 60 similarly on day three it would be 40 on day 4 it would be 20 rupees day 5 you are eating your last chocolate after day 5 you don't have any money left to buy any of the chocolates so friends if i have to say in another words like what stopped you from having any more further chocolates so we can just say that a particular condition came up and that had stopped you eating your favorite chocolate onto the sixth day. So what was this condition? The condition was you were having no money left with you. Friends, I just made this story to help you understand the basics of the recursive CTs. So last week I prepared a detailed video on what are CTs. Into recursive CT, there are three of the main of the basic concepts. Number one is the base condition number two is the recursive query and the number three is the termination condition so friends if we now go by the example which i gave earlier what was the base condition so the base condition was something like you having 100 rupees with you now coming to the second part what was the recursive query so the recursive query was you eating the same chocolate again and again onto the next days so this is a kind of recursive thing you are just doing the same activity again and again and what is the termination condition what is the condition which stopped you from eating chocolate on to the sixth day and that was like you don't have any money left with you so this is known as the termination condition so friends similarly into the recursive cities we need to provide three condition number one the base condition number two you need to write the recursive query and until what condition this recursive query would go on and on until and unless a termination condition is met so friends this is all about the recursive city now don't worry i'll be explaining everything from the very scratch from the very basic levels even if you have fear or you don't understand these kind of advanced level sql concepts i believe after watching this particular video you will be able to grab all the concepts about the recursive cities this video i have explained the recursive cities using two or three examples those will definitely help you to clear all your concepts so friends don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't to receive such kind of useful information let us quickly jump over to my screen friends will be understanding the recursive ct into a very simple way i'll be digging deep into the code explaining each of the step which is happening internally so that your all the concept will be clear and you will be able to understand recursive city so i'll be ex explaining each of the step which is happening internally into the code and how it is processing so that you are able to understand it very much better so i believe if you watch this video till the very end i have two super simple interesting examples here with me which i'll be explaining into the video with each step i'll be explaining into a lot of more details so watch this video till the very end both of these examples are too much full to understand all the concept of the recursive CT. So the very first example which you can see onto my screen here. So I've just pasted a simple function here select date name dw comma zero. Now what this particular function the output this particular function would generate and why I am starting this particular video lecture with this particular syntax or the query you can say. So if I execute the query you can see I'm getting Monday here now what if i change 0 to 1 what will be the output which i'll be getting so it is giving me as tuesday 0 was monday so please remember this 0 was monday 1 is tuesday similarly 2 would be i guess wednesday and 3 would be i guess thursday and likewise all the other days would come up so what is the kind of output which I want to generate for the very first example with the help of recursive CT. So the kind of output which I want to generate is kind of something 
which you can see onto your screen so i just want to generate all the days name which is present here with the help of recursive cd with the help of the date name function now believe me i don't have any data set from which i'll be extracting my data and i'll be processing i want to make this thing from the very scratch just using the function which i have shown into my previous screen i want to generate such kind of result my final result using the recursive city i'll be explaining each of the detail which is happening on how this recursive city it works internally so let us see very first what is the syntax of the recursive city and also you should definitely know what is the use of the union or the union all condition and what is does so basically union all let's say if i need to explain this into a very simple way let's say i have two tables here i'll just give this as id and the name and i'll just take simple data one two three and into the name i'll take as n1 n2 and n3 so let's say this is my very first table so i'll just rename this as the table one this i'm doing this to help you understand the union or the union all function if you had forgotten and i have let's say the table two into the but table two also i am having let's say multiple ids and multiple name here need not necessary that the same number of uh, rows will be present in both the tables it can be different also so i just move the very last row to avoid the confusion and into the name let's say i'll just put some random names now what if i want to have us output the final output and it should contain all the records which are present into the table one and into the table two now to use the union the two necessary conditions are the same number of columns it should be present into all the tables which you are joining vertically on a vertical nature so i'll be joining the table one with the table two into a vertical fashion you can say one above the other so i'll be having the final result which will be looking something like id name and i'll be having here ids present and also the names present so this is the final output which will happen after i do a union on both of these tables which are present here so this is the final output which will be produced with the help of the union so union basically joins the tables into a vertical fashion so friends instead of writing all the queries for the recursive city i would just simply paste the query which i have prepared prior to doing this particular video and i'll just simply paste this particular query and from this i'll be able to explain much more better way and believe me you will be able to understand into much more better way rather me writing each and every step into this video so let us dig deep into this particular query which i am having onto my screen and i'll execute the query so you can see the final output which i am having now it will be very much easy for me and you to understand the entire processing of the code what is happening internally of me writing every step here so you can see the syntax is very much simple here with ct number so this is the ct table name which we are giving here just a simple name ct underscore numbers and these are the columns which should be present into my temporary table which i am creating now the base query which i was speaking about sometimes back this is the base query into our case and this is the query which will be executing for the very first time into our query the city or the recursive city which is happening and you can see i am having a union all i'll be coming to this later why i have used or why we use the union all condition into the recursive cities and i am having this particular loop thing which is running again and again from the name itself it is very much clear that it is recursive in nature so it will run again and again until a termination condition is being met what is the termination condition here which is mentioned here so you can see here a termination condition which is mentioned here is where n should be less than 6 now please don't scratch your head i'll just explain each and everything which is happening from the very beginning i'll stop in my excel sheet to help you understand everything to much more detail way so from the very first query you can see select 0 comma date name dw comma 0 so what will this particular thing will produce so this is the very first step so i'll just write here as the first step 
so from the first step what is the output which will be produced so the very first so this is the base query as i mentioned that this would be run for the very first time into the recursive ct so into the very first step you can see zero so into the first column i'll be having zero so i'll just rename this column also or mention the column name so this is the n and this is the weekday as you can see here so i'll just mention this as weekday so into the base query as you can see i'm having a zero then i'm having this date name dw comma zero now if you remember i had run this particular query into the very beginning what was the output it was generating for dw comma zero so i'll just select this query i'll execute the code so you can see here it is generating monday so i would just simply write here as monday so this is my base query which is being generated by this particular query which you can see here above the union all now this is the output which will be produced for the very first step now the output which is produced into the first step will be the input for the second step and that later on it will be joined on a vertical way so that is what i have used or i have explained the union all function what is the usage of the union all function so this is the output for the first step so i'll just write here as the output so the output for the first step will be the input for the query for the second step now this particular output it will go into the this particular recursive query which they have written and this will be processed so the, the output for the very first step will be the input for the second step please remember this so this would be valid for any of the nth step which is happening so what was my n so my n from the very first step as you can see here it is zero so i would just color this now what according to the recursive ct what will happen now the function of the base query has completed now it will not come into the picture anymore only the recursive ct and the termination condition will come into the picture so friends here you can see n was into the very first step the output which was generated n was zero and it is telling the second into the second step n would become zero plus one so zero plus one would come into the second step so this is the second step which is happening and into the second column date name dw n plus one so what was n into the very first step n into the very first step was zero now it is zero plus one so dw comma one so what will dw comma one would generate let us see this so i'll just simply execute this particular query as you can see it is generating tuesday so i would into the second step will be getting here as tuesday so this will be the output for my second step so now this this output which we have got into the second step this will act as an input into the third step so now we are quickly moving to the third step which will happen now into the second step as i told this will become the input to the recursive query for the third step so the second step whatever output which we have generated so this is the output for the second step i'll just color this with a different color so that we are able to distinguish this so this was the output for the second step now this will become the input for the third step so you are just concerned with the recursive query i as i've just told the base query function or everything is completed you can just keep that aside aside from the picture only you will be operating on the recursive query and also you can see union all is there so as i've mentioned all the outputs they will be joined vertically when the output is calculated at every step so here you can see as i've joined the outputs or the tables into a vertical fashion this was the table one this was the table two and i've used the union function to join this into a vertical fashion 
so similarly my output is being generated internally like this so this was the output for the first step this is joined vertically with the output of the second step now this will be joined vertically with the output of the third step and this will go on and on until we meet our termination condition which is mentioned here so into the third step you can see the output which we have got into the second step this will become the input into the third step so let us move to the recursive query again so it is select n plus one so what was n in now this particular case so n you can see n is one so one plus one will become two so i just mentioned here as two and into the weekday column it is date name dw comma n plus one so n is now one the output which is being produced into the second step n is equal to one now so one plus one is equal to two so let us put here as two let us see what is the output is it is being generated let us execute the query so you can see it is showing as witness state so i'll just simply write here as witness state similarly let us uh, do it again so this is the output for the third step now let us move to the fourth step what will happen again the same logic the output which we have generated for the third step will become the input for the fourth step so i'll just mention this here so two comma witness day would come up into the recursive query as you can see n is two now so two plus one is three and three uh, you can see here dw comma n plus one so n was two into the third step as you can see here n is equal to two now i'll just color this with a different color so 2 plus 1 is equal to 3 so i'll just put this here let us see what is the output which is being generated so it is thursday so we'll just write this here as thursday similarly now this the fourth step output is completed now the fourth step output will become the input for the fifth step let us move to the fifth step quickly now n is three now so i'll just mention this into the recursive query so this is our recursive query mind you so i'll just copy this and paste it if you are having confusion so this is the query which i am telling as the recursive query again and again so you can see here three is mentioned so three plus one would become four and if we go by the logic thursday would become friday now now the fifth step is completed after the fifth step i'll be getting the sixth step this would be four plus one is five and friday would become saturday now you will say why i am not looking onto the termination condition because at every step the end which is being generated it is meeting the condition termination condition and it is fulfilling the termination condition so that is why our code is not being terminated so as you can see here 5 is present so n was 5 into the sixth step output so into the sixth step the value of n is equal to 5 and what is the termination condition the termination condition as you can see here is it is saying will run until this particular condition like the value of n should be less than 5 so again now this will be the final step for getting the sunday value so this is the final output which we need to have after this code would terminate itself into the sixth step the value of n is equal to 5 so it would again go into the code 5 plus 1 is 6 and if we put dw comma 6 it would generate the result as sunday and this is the output for the seventh step now value of n has become 6 into this particular step as you can see here so the value of n has now changed to 6 now it will again go into the query so select 6 plus 1 is equal to 7 and i don't know what will this particular thing will produce so let us check this so d w comma 7 let us see what this will produce 
or if throws an error so it is producing a result and you can see it is again producing a monday to the result but you can see this particular termination condition has met from ct numbers where n is less than six and is this particular condition true or not so this particular condition is equal to false so this result would not be produced and this would be deleted from our the final output which will be generated and this is the final output which we are having so this particular thing will only generate until the the termination condition is met so as you can see the value of n was 6 and 6 is not less than 6 so this is false so that is what it will only run only for true values wherever the condition is which is met is true it will only produce the output for all such steps so it will not produce the output for rest of the steps where the condition remains false and that is the termination condition into these particular cases friends this is how we are generating the output so this is the final ct which would be created ct underscore numbers with the help of the recursive ct which we have seen here also you can see here it is mentioned as ct underscore numbers for, into this why is this happening because at each step with the output which is being generated where it is stored it is definitely stored into the ct underscore numbers and from there we are extracting and uh, generating the recursive query again and again so that is why we are writing here from ct underscore numbers so we're just doing this from the sub query or you can say the common table expression recursive ct table which we are creating we are generating results from there and operating into them and then adding into the same result into the same output from the previous output we are just adding the output which we are getting into a particular step into the previous output and then uh, the union all condition is doing that and then it is moving forward until we are meeting the termination condition all these things are happening so i believe you have understood recursive ct and how it is working this is a very important concept it is asked a lot of many times into the advanced sql interviews so even if you are fresher please i recommend you to watch this particular video again and again if you are finding this very much confusing to rewatch this video again and again also if you are not able to understand i have one more example and this is from a real interview questions which was asked so i'll be displaying that particular example after this particular screen so i hope after that your all the queries and the recursive cities concept would be cleared so let us move to the second example here friends i have the second example ready here so uh, this was asked into the real interview so you can see here into the very first column i have the order id into the second column i have the product id and into the third column i have the quantity uh, which was produced now what is the output which you want with the help of recursive ct so uh, the question was something like write a sql query which will explode data into single unit level records so the question would look like a very complex but the kind of output which we want into our uh, let's say with the help of recursive ct is something like so you can see here five quantity is present here so for each quantity i need to have a single row so let's say if five quantity is mentioned for product id as one and the order id as one we need to have five different rows here for each of the quantity so the kind of output which i need to mention here is something like this and this particular thing which needs to be present into uh, five different rows okay I'll do a control Z and simply I'll copy paste the output into five rows. So you can see here five quantity was bought for order ID as one and the product ID as one. So we are having the five rows each for the quantity which was bought for the order ID as one and the product ID as one because from the question you can read write a sql query which will explode data into single unit level records so basically you can get this result with the help of the result which you can see here with the help of a group by a clause now you are doing a reverse of the group by clause if i say into other terms so you're just doing a reverse process of the group by clause uh, so the data would be something like order id product id and 
but it is just counting so count of quantity it is just doing and group by order id product id now we are just doing the opposite of group by so from the data from which this particular query which would, would be generated i want to get that particular data with the help of the recursive ct now the same data point here which you can see i'll just copy paste and for the order id as two and product id as two as you can see here there is just single quantity which has been purchased so this i would just color this with a different color and for order order id as three and product id as three we are having three different quantities which were purchased so i'll mention this three times so this is the final output which we want and this as i've just mentioned this is the reverse of the process of the group by this is the output which we want i just mentioned this so i'm just doing this everything to make everything very much clear what we are doing what is the kind of output which we want and into which situation do we need to apply the recursive cities because uh, let us say if i give any problem so we cannot apply recursive city into any question so there are certain questions which are made for recursive city and you need to just identify those questions like for example i've just mentioned here when we need to do something opposite of group by we need to apply the recursive city so into all those questions all those type of questions you need to apply the recursive city condition let us write the query for the recursive city into this particular case to generate this particular kind of output I just mention here with cte as and after this i will need to mention here select and i need to mention all the column names which i need to generate into the output so you can see here there are just three simple column names order id product id and the quantity columns which i need to have into our query or the output which will be producing the very first thing which i'm writing here is the base query if you remember from the previous example which i mentioned so first of all we need to focus on two things the very first thing is the base query the second thing is the termination condition so the very first thing is let us formulate a simple logic for creating the base query and later on we'll be having a termination condition until which the code would be executing look closely into the previous question i needed to have n that would be increased into each step until n reaches a particular number that was six here i need to have or i need to decrease my n if you think because you can see here i'm just going below so five quantities are present so five that would be demonstrated into a single row into the second row i'll be having four three two one and until i'm getting the n as zero so just terminate that particular step so this is the kind of logic which i'll be forming here let us see how to do this so i'll just mention all the column names which should be present into my table so my base query would contain exactly the same data which i am displaying right now into uh, my output here select star from orders so this is the base query my base query and from here i'll be decreasing going on to decrease each of the quantity value by one and that would be my contamination condition so for each order for each product id just run the query until you reach the value of the quantity as zero so this is the kind of logic which i am formulating right now i'll be will be understanding this into much more better way when i'm finished writing the query so the uh, columns here i'll be mentioned here would be select order id comma product id comma quantity from orders so this is my base query after base query what we need to write after base query we need to mention the union all condition let's write the very main part and which is the recursive query so all recursive query would look like something let's say i'll just open my excel sheet so this is my base query i'll just mention this so this is the first step output which is being produced I'll just explain what will happen at each and every step here. 
so into the first step output i'll be having my data something like so i just copy paste the entire data here control a control c so this is the output which will be produced into the first step now into the second step i'll just mention this what is the output which will be produced so you can see here this will be the input for the second step which will be generated as i have discussed earlier the output for the previous step will be in the input for the next step and we need to write our base query something like we are meeting the termination condition i have discussed so into my second step i need to have the output i'm just talking about the output so i have not written the code yet i'll just tell you the output which i need to have into my second step so into my second step i need to have a output which should look like something prd1 and this should be four and because you can see here only one quantity was purchased for order id as two and product id as two so this will vanish off from the termination condition which we have discussed so run this query for each and every product until you are reaching the quantity as zero so this will vanish off now this order id as three and the product id as three the quantity was mentioned into this step it will be having two quantities similarly into the third step if you look i'll be having for order id as one and the product id as one and into the third step if you will look so what is the kind of output which i'll be getting so the input from the so the output from the second step will become the input into the third step so into the third step four will become three and two will become one now let us jump over to the fourth step what would happen so i'll just copy this so now you can see here one is captured here one cannot be more reduced so the termination condition for the order id as 3 and the product id as 3 has been met so this will vanish off and 3 would become 2 into the fifth step what would happen this is the final step into our process and 2 would become 1 and later on using the union all all of these reports or all of these results into each of the step is being joined vertically it is happening internally so at the very last at each step whatever output which has been generated this will now be joined and this is the final output which we need to generate so you can see here we are getting our final output similarly for what we have into the output which we wanted in this quantity column all this has been substituted for one so you can just simply hard code it this is not which we need to focus on we should focus on on to generating a query or the output similarly to what we have generated at each step and we have discussed right now so let us write the query let us formulate a certain logic so that we are able to do this right here select and i'll copy the same columns from here and you can see here i was subtracting minus one from each of the quantity so into the quantity i need to mention this quantity minus one cte and at last we need to mention the termination condition so we'll be coming to that so where quantity should be greater than equal to some number so that the termination condition is matched so for now i'll just mention as two i'll be coming to this later after this i'll just simply close my query here so our sub query or the recursive city has been created so what is the output which you want so i'll just mention here select 
and I'll mention all the column names and let us run the query let us see what is the output which is being generated here so you can see here we are generating the same kind of output which we required and if you would run this query internally you would get to know why i have written here as 2 greater than equal to 2 let us understand each and every step for one or two steps and then the recursive ct would be very much clear so this was the very base query which we had so this the first step would looks exactly how it is now into the second step each of the order id would go the product id would go and the quantity would become minus one the rows from the previous step will be processed into the next step where the quantity is greater than or equal to two so all of these quantities it will first of all check whether this particular condition is met or not so whether this particular quantity it is greater than two so yes five is greater than two so it will be processed into the second step so that is why we are getting the output for the order id as one and the product id as one four now it will check for order id as two and product id as two whether the quantity of order id as two and product id as two is greater than equal to two or not so you can see here it is just a one so one is not greater than equal to two so this is the termination condition which i was discussing until and unless the quantity is becoming zero so i've just written this differently into mathematical terms if you just understand this it is exactly the same thing which i was discussing previously so until and unless the quantity is becoming zero or it is remaining as one so this particular thing it simply means that the quantity should be one and then the con conditions are met and the termination condition will be executed so you can see here order id and product id is and quantity is three so it will be processed into the next step into the second step because three is greater than equal to two so into the next step in second step uh this particular thing three would become two now the output which is produced into the second step will become the input into the third step so this is now the input now it will again check whether the quantity which is coming here so i'll just copy this sub query here to the excel sheet so the quantity which is uh, coming here into the second step 4 it is greater than or equal to 2 2 is greater than or equal to 2 so both of these queries would be processed into the second step and the quantity would be reduced by 1 so 4 will become 3 2 would become 1 so this is the output for the first third step now this will become the input for the fourth step so 3 for the very first row you can see here 3 is greater than or equal to 2 so this will be processed and it will become as 2 and but 1 is not greater than or equal to 2 so it will remain exactly as it is and into the fourth step this particular condition will come up and it will again go now we just have a single row to process into the fifth step as you can see here so 2 is greater than or equal to 2 so it will definitely just true so it will again go and it, this will become as 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so quantity would become as 1 now it will again go into the sixth step if it is mentioned so it will again check 1 is greater than or equal to 2 so quantity has now become as 1 and this is false so this is the termination condition which has been met and then here the query will be sorted out and into the output you will be getting the quantity and all the outputs has been posted why i was telling this is opposite of group by so first of all i just do a select star from ct and then i'll be doing that from here okay Just execute the code so you can see here the code has been executed and instead of the ct i'll just mention this into the sub query here okay okay just copy this Paste this group by copy this, paste this, and that's all is required. 
let us execute the query and you will be able to understand why i was telling this particular problem is the opposite of group by so you can see here with the help of group by i'm just generating the input of the particular problem and the output is just the opposite of the group by plot so for particular problems you need to apply the recursive cts this was one of the problem you just identified where we just need to do opposite of group by we need to do the recursive ct similar problems you need to identify from your end and into which problems we can apply the recursive ct so friends i hope this particular video was quite informational and useful to you and i was able to explain each and every detail into much more better way so do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't to receive such kind of useful information on a daily basis meet in the next video thank you so much bye